BC, what's up guys? Man, it's been a while. Been a long while. I want to say May, either April or May. Well, last time I uh, got on here was uh, I did the jazz vinyl tag. Um, this is the year end. We made it. Man, with 2022, the 31st. I had to go and um, I had to go and try to squeeze one in, man, because uh, man, the guys was telling me, they say, "Hey, where you at, man? Where are your videos? You supposed to be doing more videos." But yeah, I've been busy. Uh, I tore my old kitchen up, put a new, I put new cabinets, man. I've been so busy all and then working. We've been busy, but yeah, I'm gonna get on here, man. I pulled all my stuff that majority of the, my my favorite finds of 2022. And um, I'm going to start off with the first one, though. This one added to my finds. And I, I want to thank Dom from Seeking a Thread for, uh, for man, I, I was so happy that that was something he, he posted. It was him and Alex. They did a video. It was one of the Sundays, like two Sundays ago, I believe. It was, uh, yeah, and I was on there, and they, he, he showed this record. Man, you're talking about, Wow. Moving out. I've been after this one for a while, for a long time, on the Prestige label. This is the period, uh, most of this, the period pieces I've been um, looking for is from Sunny is this stuff, like from 56. This is pretty much a comp of all the stuff from 1954. Uh, it has Blakey on here. The first side has Blakey with Kenny Durham. And then the second side has uh, Art Taylor and Monk. On the, on the keys but yeah this one here this is a oh, man this is one sunny you, you really need to have uh, more than you know on side two is one of my favorites on here this is a killer and you know his ballads and the way he just flows his um his sax playing is so fluid man and the thing about sunny is just and he his his uh ability to take a note and pretty much just combined it with all type of uh, free flow. You could tell that he he pretty much listened to Bird. Bird definitely was an influence on him. And I'm so grateful to, you know, I got to see him in the, I want to say the early 2000s. I saw him, it was before he retired. He did a, a, a jazz showcase in Chicago. So I did get to see him far away, but I got to see him and hear him play. But yeah, moving out. Dom had put this one for sale, man. I jumped on it, man. Beautiful copy. And this was on the Prestige label. This is a second press. The first press would be the uh, 440 50th Street. But yeah, this is a beautiful copy, man. Second press from 58. Beautiful. Still the same metal work, regardless of how you you know say it. But yeah, Sonny Rollins. And then he threw in, he said, I'm going to throw something in there for you. He sends this. Wow. And the funny thing about this one, I don't even have this. He said, I was, he said on the notes, threw this in, I threw this, I threw in this Ahmad Jamal, hoping you don't have it. Excellent stuff. And a white label promo. Man, I was so floored man because this guy you could tell i knew this guy was watching my videos he threw this damn white label promo man you talking about sweet the manhattan reflections is like my favorite amal jamal that's my favorite amal jamal piece man and he does it live this is a live recording but yeah dom i really appreciate it man that was like oh man you talking about man i was playing that song the man hadn't reflected. I was just, man, just playing that thing over and over. My wife was getting aggravated with it, you know. But, uh, yeah, we're here, here. It's, man, it's almost the new year. And, wow. So, that was like, I got it last week. Oh, man, I'm still floored about it, man. So, now I'm going to go through the stuff that I had picked up. And it was this nice little shop over in Roselle, uh, Record Wonderland. Everybody knows Chris Cole or John Cole Train 69. That was his old name. But yeah, Chris Cole worked at this shop. 
And I went there, was talking to him, and the guy, the the boss there was talking about he bought a jazz collection. And I was like, I was like, oh man. He said, Oh, I think you're gonna like this jazz collection. I looked at the stuff that you buy. He said, You're gonna dig it. I was like, Oh, okay. And then the man. Chris called me, told me to come down there, and I got to look through that stuff. Man, it was a lot of stuff, man. And a lot of that stuff I was able to grab. I didn't. It was some stuff that he had that I already had, like uh, Walsh for Debbie. I had a stereo copy. He had a mono copy, but that that the price of that is going so high now. Uh, he had a Love Supreme. He had an original mono, and I already have a nice, beautiful copy of that that pressing. And he had Undercurrent, uh, Bill Evans with Jim Hall. But yeah, I grabbed these because these were the ones I didn't have. But hey, I'm going to start off. I, this was in this collection, Pristine. Yeah, this here is Bobby Timmons, Riverside. And I had to jump on this one. This was like, I've been buying a lot of the Bobby Timmons stuff. Chung Kung Ken, the man. Chung Kung, well, oh man, man, I've just been grabbing all his stuff, man. Man, grab this one, original first press. And I grabbed this Monk. I didn't have this in my collection. I know I got a decent amount of Monk stuff, but Riverside, I don't have everything. I got like Brilliant Corners and a couple of other ones. But this was one I, whew, I was so glad to get this one. This is a 1963 press. An original it is, the cover is different and it's a white label with the blue writing. But yeah, this one had the, the same same metal work, man. I was happy with it. It was clean. This guy's collection. Uh, this was a collection the guy passed away and his wife brought the records in from what the guy told me at Record Wonderland. And yeah, he this guy's stuff was... And people... And I wasn't the only one going through that stuff. It was other guys that was... A lot of the... It was some jazz guys that found out about it and they came up there. This one was a big upgrade. I had a 66 press. Dude had this in here. This was the first one that really caught, the second one that caught my eye after the uh, Bobby Timmons interplay. I know everything now. A lot of people have been buying the Bill Evans box set, but yeah, kudos to the people that bought the Bill Evans box set. But yeah, I, that's one I'm still on my want list, but still, I love these mono pressing ones. They sound great. Yep, interplay. And this one has the uh, you know, Freddie Hubbard, Jim Hall connection. And then it has Philly Joe Jones, which I read Bill Bill Evans said Philly Joe Jones was his favorite drummer of all time. So that's that's some big stuff to say. This one was an upgrade. I had a I had a uh first press, but it was noisy as all hell, like they played it with a bad needle. When you hear the track Peace Peace. It's, man, and this is a 60s press because it's on, it says the uh, ink on there. So anything with the ink, when it doesn't have the ink, that's like, a, it's like late 50s, mid 50s. So, but yeah, everybody digs Bill. Peace, peace is a, is a, a must and they got to be quiet as hell. Joe Henderson, black is the cover. Black is the color, man. Killer. Milestone. Joe just moved up the ranks. Every album I get from Joe, man, I just be floored. All his great... I got another Joe I'm going to show you from a, a record show that I picked up. But yeah, Black is the color. And the covers, man, they were like... And I said, man, this guy was... He kept beautiful care. And uh, you know what's so funny about a lot of these, like the Bill Evans? They had the... They had the um, the old school inner paper. Let me see if I got one of my records that had that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think this one had. I'm just make sure. No, it's not this one. But they had like the uh, the old school uh, the inner sleeves. It's like made out of plastic. Kelly the Great. Not a first press. Want to say a second press? But yeah, this one right here. Lee Morgan. Man, Paul Chambers. 
flaky. Man, monster, man. Yep. No, I'm sorry. Philly Joe Jones. See, uh, I'm getting my players mixed up. Philly Joe Jones. Chambers. Yeah, Kelly the Great. Yeah. Whew. That one song that Mama Dukes is killer. And then this one here. They had the shrink on it. I took the shrink out. It was water damage. You can see here it's a little water damage, but the records are pristine. This guy took care of his records. I don't know how water got on this, but yeah. Chicago's very own Johnny Griffin Quartet. Original. Yeah, Riverside. 25 and a half days in the way he spells it. D-A-Z-E. And this one has Ron Carter which is still with us right now, just blazing. He just still blazing the trail. Ron Carter's on this, buddy. Clean copy of this one. Beautiful, pristine. It looked brand new. It had shrink on it. I took the shrink off. My Funny Valentine, Miles Davis in concert. And that's 1965 on Columbia. Yeah. Another Miles... See little Miles there? That's Miles there. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then and then um I want to say down the line, this was this wasn't from the same collection. I was able to get this one right off. I knocked this this was one out I, I was after for a long time, Dexter Go. Um I had a beat up copy, I had a used copy that I had bought. Uh this was, I had a used copy that I had bought for like eight bucks. It was noisy as hell. But yeah, I had a, I ran across one of these the year of the pandemic, 2020 in December. And when I was in Milwaukee and the guy had this and Juju. And I was kind of like, which one, which one? And I went with the Juju and I was saying in my mind, I said, man, I hope I run into go again. And yeah, I finally got this one. And yeah, this was Dexter's favorite session i remember reading this in one of the uh blue note magazines it was like a blue note book he said this was his favorite session butch warren billy higgins sonny clark he said man these guys he did like two records with them i mean this is just he said he was astounded how everything came love for sale is my jam on here and then the uh tears run dry with i guess i hang my tears out to dry I guess I hang my tears out to dry. The ballot. That, that's a beauty. Before I bought this record, they threw that on when I was out at Record Wonderland. And I was like, I say I had to get this record. He played that and it was so smooth and quiet. And everybody in the store was like, who is that? And Dexter's playing this so man, his 60s blue notes are it's like a, a must. And then I grabbed this one there. Since I've been on the Monk kick too, buying some of the Monk stuff. This is the uh, the 1954 sessions with him and Blakey. And there was a couple of tracks on here with Max Roach. But yeah, Just the Gigolos on here and Bermuda Swing. I showed this on the, um, I believe I showed this one on the jazz vinyl tag of uh, this year. But yeah, this Monk, this was one of my favorite pickups. And then out, there's another shop that I always go to, uh, Blue Village Vinyl. That's another place. That's in Westmont. They always have some great music there, too. Uh, they get a, a steady flow of stuff. But I found some really killer jazz there, like this one with the shrink. Lonnie Smith, Dr. Lonnie Smith drives. Must have. This was like a beat a beat album. Try Call Quest sampled uh, Spinning Wheel. Yep. The spinning wheel, and um, he changes it and flips it, and um, and that's what he uses for "Can I Kick It?" But yeah, I think I should. Yeah, I showed this on the um, jazz vinyl tag too. But this was a killer find of the year too. I was after this one for like man, 10, 15 years, and rest in peace to him. He passed away. I remember it was like in September of last year. Then I go to my buddy, I had another guy I go to all the time. That's why I found a lot of my uh, Gigi Grice. And uh, it was Gigi Grice 
and uh, McCoy Tyner Illumination. I found there was a spot over in Oak Park, OPR, Oak Park Records. I found some killers there. This one here was an upgrade, a big upgrade. My copy was so noisy, scratches. I had bought it. And it was actually that record I bought from the Oak Park store a long time ago. But I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, that's like a, a you'll end up finding a better copy. And he got this one in. This was from a guy that had a jazz consignment with him. This one. And then the one I was so happy to get off my, get this one off my, the list. Miles, another Miles, first pressing. Clean, nice copy. Working with the Miles Davis Quintet. Oh. Yeah, these two I got over at Oak Park. And then in September around my birthday, it was like the weekend of my birthday, I went to the uh, the Hillside Record Fair, the Chicago Record Fair. And I go there and I'm um, looking around. I went to a couple of the tables and I was looking, of course, I was looking for jazz and other stuff. And I was kind of like, man, this is like nothing here. So I see an old boy from the record Wonderland, which I got all that jazz stuff. He said, hey, man, did you go in the other room? There's a guy table you should check out. I was like, no, I haven't been over there. Yeah, I think you will really dig his stuff. So he, we, he walks me over there. So we go over there. The guy had a table set up. And I could just look and tell that he had some he had some decent stuff. He had like I saw like a lot. Of, I saw Cold Train. I saw like some Impulse titles. And um, the crazy thing about it, he was like, oh, I was looking through all that. He said, oh, you couldn't find anything there? I said, no, because some of the stuff I already have. He said, man, you want to see the crazy box? I said, what's the crazy box? He pulls out this vinyl box. I pop it open. And he had some serious grills in there. He had that, uh, that the monk. I already had that monk. It was a uh, uh, the early monk uh, when he does the cover of um, Caravan. Yeah, Monk plays Ellington. It's that album. He had he had that album. I was like, oh man, I already had his record, but his record was really clean. And then I flipped through, and that's when I saw this one. I was like, damn, this was on my list. This was one I wanted big time. The Meters, straight funk guitar, man, Nola. That's that NOLA sound, man. Killer. Josie label, original. This one will have not even surface marks. Not the, it was so clean. He had this one. I started flipping through. And then I saw the other one. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get the meters. And when I flipped to the other one, I saw this in there. Damn. I said, I, I can't walk out of here without that one and that meters. So the guy gave me a deal for both of them, man. Tetragon, Killer, Joe Henderson, another Joe off my list, another Joe, another Joe, Smoking Joe. Yeah, so I got, I ended up grabbing these at the Hillside Rep the Record Fair. That was, that was awesome, man. Talking about great. And then I go to Reckless in the City. This was, uh, I want to say last month. I uh, went in the city, picked up this one. They had this one on the wall. Moon Train, Woody Shaw. Sorry about the glare. Woody Shaw, Moon Train, on the Muse. His Muse stuff is oof, smoking, man. The Muse label just, I'm still after that. Roy Brooks, The Free Slave. I'm after that one. The Muse stuff is like, man, they like most sought after. It's tripped out how the prices of those went up high. So I grabbed that one, and I grabbed this Mulligan and Monk. They had this one featured on in the jazz section. I was like, oh, man, I don't have that record. I grabbed this one. This one's cool. That I, I just like the picture, too, man. It's just, this one's on. Um, this one came out in the early 60s, so this is like a second or third press, but pretty clean copy. Mullen meets Monk. And my thing is, if it ain't the first press and I can't, you know, if it's really clean and it's the same, the same, but, you know, they use the same metal work. I get it. Then we shift back to Milwaukee. I go to Milwaukee. This was, um, I want to say I found this in July. Right when, uh, yeah, it was around the 4th of July. I found these uh, Hampton Halls, Volume 2. 
on Contemporary. I took a chance on this one because I remember going there like a year prior. He had this and I passed on it. And he still had it there. I guess a lot of people don't know who this guy is. This guy can play. He's on that, uh, a lot of those craft reissues that they uh, put out. But Stella by Starlight is, uh, is a must, man. Yep. And Yesterday's is good, too. Yeah, this guy, he has that, he had that ability like uh, Bill Evans. He was really like, he jumps and gets into the note, man, when he plays, man. He's, he, he's, a, he's a killer. But I know a lot of the drugs, he was locked up and he had a lot of issues, man. Almost like uh, Tina Brooks, you know, he was almost in that vein. But Tina Brooks never got locked up, but he did, so... And then I found this one here, Marvin Gaye, early on Tamala, Southern Kind of Fellow. Yeah, one more, yeah. Where I Lay My Hat. And then, of course, Southern Kind of Fellow's on here. Hitchhiker's on here, too. But yeah, this is a beautiful copy on Tamala. Couldn't pass on that. And it had like the price sticker right here, this yellow sticker, $279. It's crazy. Records cost that much. Nah, it goes for more than that now. That's old school Motown. Yep. And then I go with the online buys. I saw one online and the price, it was killer. I couldn't pass on it. Whimsa Chambers, Paul Chambers. Monster. Him and, uh, this is uh, OG Lexington. Well, you probably can't see it, but glare. Yeah, OG Lexington. But yeah. John Coltrane on this one. Yep. And then, of course, you know, on the, on the sticks and the skins, Billy Joe. But yeah, this was his second release on Blue Note. That was an online buy. And then this one here. A guy on Instagram, Midnight Ryan had showed this and he played it was a song on here he played and I was just like what the hell is this man I was floored how good it sounded and yeah message books and dreams then there was a guy on there from uh, Germany was telling uh, was talking about this record uh, Malcolm and he knew it and um, also it was another guy that knew about this record. Oh yeah, Jonas, man, Sublime Media, man. Jonas was talking about this when he did his crowd rock. I, and he's right, man. This cover looks just like it sounds. It's evil, it's eerie, in your face, but beautiful, man. Yeah, and then the last one is this one here, Matheny, 92. Love this record, Secret Story. Very, I mean, the way he plays and the instruments. Like my favorite album by him. I, you know, he has so many different albums. I like uh, Imaginary Day and stuff like that. And this is like far reaching. This is some Matheny I like. But then he has some of the albums I kind of like, oh, this is too, you know, elevator-ish. But I like, I like Matheny, man. Matheny is like one of the great players, man. The improvisers played with Joni during her jazz period with Jocko. Well, yeah, Pat Matheny's secret story. And I want to do a shout out to um, Eric Weinbender. Weinbender, thanks for the shout out, man. And I love that video you showed, man. You showed all the uh, LPs. But yeah, everybody, yeah. 2023, I'm going to come back with some more videos. But yeah. Man, this has been a great year for digging, man. Great year. Let's keep the vinyl dig alive, definitely. Happy New Year to everybody. Stay safe. Peace.